the hand right here. So you can see underneath here, it's getting pretty dark because that's where the shadow would exist if it's casted on the ground. And then over here where the claw is, so let's just kind of put in a shot. Hey everybody, welcome to Draw Sessions. Today, I'm going to show you how to achieve depth in your sketches by just adjusting your line quality and your line weight. And what I want to start off with is by showing you just three different types of lines that you can use to achieve a, a pretty believable sketch. So you're probably thinking, you know, what, what, is that, what does that actually mean? And as you can see that I'm just applying lines on a page right now, I'm pushing harder on some, I'm pushing really hard on that one, and it kind of looks like a hairball, correct? Well, yes, that's how almost all thumbnail sketches are going to start. What I want you to do as the viewer, and if you're sketching along with me, is try to imagine not having a polished sketch right away. And I think that's what hurts a lot of beginner artists, is that when, when we jump into a brand new sketchbook and we see a, a nice, you know, blank white sheet of paper, we immediately start putting an outline in like this, okay, because we have this vision in our head of what we want the creature to look like, the character to look like, or whatever else we're drawing. This kind of looks like cabbage. <laughs> but I want, I want you to realize that if we start building it from scratch, we're going to get to that outline point. Because the outline essentially is, um, it's almost like icing on the cake, when you know you have your good design underneath. So what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna create my own layer here, and we're gonna leave the background layer as the textured uh, parchment paper you see here. We're gonna have this layer called uh, Sketch. It's a good idea to get in the habit of naming your layers, by the way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build uh, a creature from scratch by just using basic shapes. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a nice little sphere there Maybe I'll use a bigger one here. But if you notice, the lines are very, very lightly drawn. All right. Now, from here, I'm letting the shapes fall where they may. Okay, so this is almost going to be like a double lesson. It's going to be learning how to create depth with line quality and line weight. And then at the same time, building a creature from scratch using these. All right. So, Let's have a little fun here and throw in a triangle just, just to see what happens. So we're gonna put in, uh, how about a cone? We'll put it in a cone. Okay, so we'll do a little ellipse there, like this, and then we'll put in the cone. I'm gonna push a little bit harder up here at the top. There we go. So there's the cone, there's the two spheres, and let's work with those. So next, because this is all on its own layer right here. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a wireframe with a very, very light line. It's very faint. And if I zoom in here, you'll be able to see that faint line. As a matter of fact, let's just work on this zoomed in um, view right here. All right, so in my mind, I don't really have an idea of what I want the creature to be yet. All I care about is just building these shapes up. So after I get the, the line weight in here, to where I want it, so I'm not pushing hard at all. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is, is going to establish where the eye is gonna be. So I'm just gonna put a little oval here, maybe slightly egg-shaped or kidney-shaped. Let's put another one here just for just for fun, okay? Kind of like a um, four eyes all together. Maybe it's some alien creature, I don't know. And this one might have fur, okay? I don't know, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here, and this is the fun part about it. So now I'm, I'm starting to feel where I can put some of these lines at. Um, I know that this large sphere here is going to be the main body shape. Now, why is that? It's because it takes up the most space for one. And also I'm envisioning in my head that it's probably where the stomach is, where the hip is going to grow out of, etc. So let's flip this canvas a little bit because I wanna see um, what this is gonna look like on this side. 
All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep very, very light lines again. Okay, I'm not gonna go to the medium set. And uh, before I go any further, this is what I'm going to be using. I'm gonna be using light, like this. Let's get a better one in here. Light, medium, and then dark, like that. That's it. So everything that falls in between here is gonna be a combination of me releasing the pressure off of the pen. And if you're, if you're following along with this, traditionally in a real sketchbook, it's the same thing. So just make sure that when you're sliding your hand across your page, keep your pinky knuckle scraping against the page and don't put the palm of your hand down, okay? You want to keep your hand as light as possible. All right, so now that we're starting to get these shapes in here, um, I'm gonna start layering in this jaw and okay, maybe like a thicker head. I don't really like those eyes, so I'm just gonna take them out. Let's just have the head here. Okay. All right, so once we have this, these are still light. I'm pushing just a little harder now to where the back and maybe the stomach area is going to be a little darker than the sphere. But the sphere, it's all still on the same layer. So we definitely want to keep that. All right, so let's move down here a little bit. And then the shape of a tail can be broken off into a couple different basic shapes that you want. You can do an elongated cylinder or you can actually do a triangle or well, a cone, but you would have to curve it a little bit. So let's do, let's do this. Uh, let's do a wireframe of the tail like that. And then we'll sharpen it off here and then we'll just draw the rest of the cone here, all right? Now, the second thing I wanna establish is where the, uh, the main joints are for the arms, all right? So I'm just gonna put a sphere to indicate where, where I want the shoulder to be. And then I'm gonna do a slightly larger sphere to indicate where I want the hip to be. Now the bone shape and the bony landmarks that are gonna be, you know, showing off and popping off underneath all of the hair and the skin and everything, that is irrelevant right now. I'm just locating where I need everything. All right, I'm gonna do a wireframe again by keeping very light lines, very light lines. That. So this is this creature is going to be. It, it kind of looks like a rat. I'm not going to lie. Looks like a rat. Uh, kind of disturbing. But hey, why not, right? All right. So let's do uh, a slightly more rigid um, tri or not triangle, but tricep shape right here. And then you got the elbow, which is another joint, and then the arm coming out. There we go. Um, I'm gonna change the head shape a little bit so it's not just like a rat. I'm just gonna make the face rather abrupt. Probably give it a stronger jaw, something flat in the face. Maybe uh, uh, the chin can come out like this. And then notice how when I'm putting all of these lines on, if you look inside here, there's different line weights happening, okay? And it goes along with the principle of using these. Okay, so you got light, you got medium, and then you have darker. Now I haven't gone too dark yet. I've gone probably in between this one and this one. But if you notice, some of them are pretty light. And if I get happy with it, I'll make it dark underneath to indicate where the shadow is. And then I'll release some pressure and then maybe do uh, some like a cheekbone or some, some kind of structure. Now, when you look at this face or this head, I guess you could say, there's a, a lot of lines happening in between here. That's totally okay. I have not gone to an outline yet. I don't have a, a real direction as far as an exact creature that I'm drawing. And this is, this is what's gonna happen for clients or when you're working for a studio is that they expect you to come up with the ideas. They have something that they would like to see in their head, but most of the time it's like, hey, concept artist, Let's see what you got, you know, come up with something neat and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right, so once we have this, um, the, the, <laughs> the, sh the shape is kind of, kind of odd looking, but hey, this is a creature, we're making it up, it doesn't exist anywhere else. It, it looks like a, almost like a dinosaur and a rat at the same time. So I've added some more line weight in here. Notice how 
the bottom of the thigh is getting a little darker. Okay, that's because if, I wanna give the indication that if light's coming down this way, that's where the shadow would exist. But also, aesthetically, it just looks better when you do that for sketches. So let's switch the perspective again. Okay, so there we go. Now we have that, uh, we can start adding some thickness in on the arm. Okay, and, and when I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I'm using these spheres as the real indicators of where the muscles and joints are gonna go. So the same thing with the wrist up here. So I wanna make sure that the lines that are attaching to that little circle are going over it. Now, why, why would they be going over it? It's because there's, there's a lot of tendons and muscles and ligaments that are growing around that sphere. That's where the main joint is. All right, so I'm, I'm making sure that I uh, show that in my design. All right, so now I'm, I'm starting to layer on some slightly darker uh, lines. And what these are, are more of the muscular shape. The basic shapes like the spheres and, and the cones that I used, um, that was just more of a guideline for me. Okay, so now what, I'm, now what I can do is I can really start to scribble in where the other body parts are like the appendages and maybe the arms coming down this way on the other side of the body because I know based on this really big indication of the shoulder area and then here where the shoulder muscle is going to be I know that if I go through the body on the other side that's where the shoulder is going to lie on that other side so I know where to point that arm at. Now under here under the belly where you can see the creature's left arm there's a lot of scribbling going on so what I'm doing is I'm adding depth because now I have the legs and arms on the other side showing, but the front leg is what we're going to see first. So the whole point of this lesson is showing depth just with scribbles. And so I'm going to slightly darken the front arm, just the tricep area. And I'm going to let some of the, the pencil strokes flow off of the you know, the edges, because I want to keep the sketch fresh and energetic. There's nothing better to look at, it, and not even just creature design, but characters, especially industrial design, if you love doing props like, you know, vehicles, guns, but also stuff that, that populates an environment, okay? So we have electronic equipment, um, chairs, tables, you know, th think about the next time that you're in a first person shooter game and you kill all the bosses or kill all the enemies in the area and you're just kind of you know, picking up stuff for your you know your loot or your bag your weapons or whatever just look at all the stuff laying around somebody had to draw that somebody had to design it um okay so you can see now that by adding the slightly darker line underneath i'm adding depth because the lines in the back are going to remain very very light Okay, so it's gonna be the equivalent of this one up here. Um, the other cool thing that you can do is without shading, okay, so we're not gonna spend a ton of time like this and putting in all the little shading marks are, are across the entire thing. That's gonna be a different lesson where I show the, the actual rendering techniques. What we're going to do is we're going to indicate where those areas are, just with line only. So that means hey, here's a hip, okay, so I'm just going to lightly draw in some wrinkles without shading around it. Um, here's the thigh area, okay, so the hips up here. Now I could probably, near the lat muscle, I can put some skin folds. You know, think about a human, think about our shoulders and our armpits and everything when we lay our arms completely down to the side. We're gonna have some wrinkles showing in, you know, near the armpit on the pec, and then in the back where, you know, your, your rhomboid muscles are and your lat muscles. That's, that's what makes these things believable because even though the deltoid area is getting a little darker now, around it, you can start to see with very light lines and maybe medium weight lines, I'm indicating where the skin is starting to hang down. Now, I still haven't figured out where I want the eyes yet. I'm, I'm thinking to make this thing look really weird. It kind of looks like a bird almost. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll put in 
this crazy looking mouth here and some skin folds right here for the back of the jaw. Maybe I'll put the eye right here and then I'll just indicate it just with a circle. Okay, and that's it. Maybe the ears over here. So then there's the neck. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm just gonna put in some thickness in the leg here, slightly darker, because again, this leg in the back, it's left leg, needs to be lighter than what's in the front here to show that this stuff actually is in the front. There we go. Now you don't have to be perfect with it. it. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. Actually, I'm just gonna make this look like a spider. That's gonna be even crazier. So let's put in some, some spider eyes, different sizes, just to add a little bit of depth and character to it. There we go. Um, okay, so the back area here, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, so I'm just kind of ghosting in some lines. Let's, let's flip the canvas and see what we got. There we go. Uh, very, very lightly going to put in indications of fur like this. So in reality, this could be some kind of failed mutation or failed experiment from scientists and maybe it broke out of the lab. I don't know, but uh, whatever it is, it's, it's kind of terrifying and a little gross. Okay, so once we got that, I'm still going over some of the other lines. So another good way to practice good line weight and good line quality is if you run the cursor across the page like this and keeping your, your shoulder locked, you can see the straight line appearing down there. Now it's not exact, like I'm not holding down shift and just coloring it over and over and over again. No, it, it, this practice or this method allows you to practice thick to thin lines and also using your shoulder to get those really big movements. Because if you notice up here on this creature sketch, it's a bunch of lines that are not hair marks like this. Because that's another thing that I think it, it doesn't look realistic and it makes your drawings look unfinished. And you can feel somebody's anxiety in their drawing if they do that. Whereas, hey, I'm just gonna do this big tail here, this big swoop. Oh yeah, nope, there's an arch. Hey, I just drew the entire back with one single line. So the next time you're, you're piecing together a creature or a character or whatever you're gonna draw, do bigger strokes. Right? And I'm gonna keep saying this, I'm gonna keep bringing this up as a, an example, but yeah, at school, my teacher specifically told me you have to sketch bigger. And then once I started sketching bigger, all of a sudden, my vehicle started looking better. My, my lines were looking better. I wasn't obsessed with the detail as much. And then when my designs were better, I put details on the better designs and my, my sketches just looked that much better altogether. That rhymed and I did not even mean to do that. That sounded so corny. I'm sorry, that was not scripted at all, I promise. So we have these lines here. Now, as far as shading goes, when it comes to a drawing like this, don't even worry about it. The, the bottom line is getting a good design out, okay? So if you darken up areas where you want the muscle to go, okay, so here's the bottom of the tail. Um, anytime I start a new direction with a new line, that new line gets dark and then it, it forms into a lighter one. So here's an example. Let's say that I want to focus up here on this rear deltoid muscle. Okay, so I want to bring another muscle up here on the back. Well, instead of just starting dark and just have it be dark all the way up, uh, lightly ghost in where you want your hand to go, start dark, and then lighten up as you go up like that. And then you do it again, but you go in a different direction. And then you, you do it again, and then you do it again. And all of a sudden, you're gonna have this collection of really cool texturing going on like skin wrinkles and there's gonna be a lot of depth going on so when I zoom out like this that thumbnail has a lot of energy because it almost looks like I drew the skeleton underneath and then I drew the the muscles with it and then I drew the outline of the creature so when we when we look at our drawings and we're thinking oh man this thing's gonna have awesome spikes or awesome scales and 
It's gonna have all these weird hairy tentacles coming out of its body and these strange vents. You're never going to get to something that cool unless you build it up and it has a strong silhouette and then your design is going to sing that much better, all right? Or that much more, I should say. So now that we have this relatively decent design going on here, uh, there's still a lot I could do to this. So it's, it's not awesome by any means, but let's see what we can do with it. Once we have the joints and, and everything established, you know, I like going back over and just putting in the shapes. There's the, you know, there's the knee right there. There's the shin, there's the ankle right here. Once I have this, then I can go back into the head area and figure out, okay, so that's where the mouth is. That's where the back of the head is. Let's put the ear somewhere down there underneath the, the noggin. There's the skin wrinkles on the neck, kind of like a lizard or kind of like a gullet, I guess you could say. Um, I, yeah, we could probably put like a fin right here on the head. That'll look kind of cool like this. Notice how I'm just scribbling it in, but even then I'm using thick to thin lines. All right, so that's that's key. Now I'm gonna darken up the, the eyeballs just a little bit, and I'm gonna put in some, some scribbles around the eye just to give it texture. I'm not shading by any means. You're not gonna see any shading throughout this entire drawing. That's because that's not what this lesson is about. Okay, so I'm gonna darken up the bottom here. So you see how I'm skipping back and forth. That's because when we're building something from scratch like this, our ideas are flowing nonstop from literally head to tail or toe, whatever you're designing. Another thing that I like doing is uh, like when we think of detail, we immediately think of, oh, if we're gonna draw hair or fur, then we have to draw every single little stroke in there. And while that is true for the finishing touches and the polishing of your sketch. Starting out, just to indicate where it is, you don't have to do that. Just scribble together a clump and then layer the clumps like this, especially in the back here. So you could see all these kind of cruddy shapes here. Okay, so once we start playing around with fur or hair or, hey, maybe your creature doesn't even have any, another really fun thing to do just by showing line weight is texturing that is closest to us. One of my favorite methods to do is scaling. Okay, so not scaling as in sizes, but lizard scales or reptilian scales. Okay, so let, let's look at the deltoid area, for example. I'm gonna start off very lightly, and I'm just going to put in some scale shapes that are going to fit the shape of the actual muscles. Okay, so think about deltoid. Now, I, I don't want to copy human deltoids exactly. All right, so I'm kind of just using what is known for our anatomy and just kind of making up the rest while you know I can still bend the rules a little bit because I'm using basic shapes of the deltoid muscles that we know, but also we're just moving them just slightly so that it fits my creature's design. Kind of like the lesson that I posted last week about the, uh, the cat arm anatomy. So here, we're losing the detail. This is when the darkest line wave really comes into play. So let's go back in here and let's just darken up where those scales are sitting. And then once you start layering up your thumbnail sketches like this, watch what happens. It's really cool because Without shading one bit, this drawing is starting to take shape because we're doing light, medium, and dark lines. Okay, so I, I have some here that are a little darker, some here that are medium, and then the darkest lines are the parts that are popping out the most forest. For us, not forest. <laughs> ha, you know what, I should have a gag reel for my uh, for my YouTube videos. Maybe I'll do that sometime, like a B-roll. Um, if you do this enough, you can layer a really cool, uh, almost, almost like an orthographic feel to your characters and creatures without shading at all. Because 
nine times out of 10, the 3D department will love flat colors, almost like a coloring book instead of fully rendered images. Okay, fully rendered images for a, a gaming company is usually you know, sending it off to the modeling department so they know how to paint it. Okay, so like a fully rendered image is going to, um, it's going to excite the entire team to show everybody what it's going to look like finished. Whereas if you do these really cool concept sketches, you're a concept artist. So most of your work is going to be in the concepting phase anyway. They'll hire an illustrator. You know? But anyway, um, once I have this, I'll choose some of the bigger areas here, like the thigh, and then I'll try to shape these larger scales to what the thigh muscles are doing. Now, again, it's not going to be exact, but exact as in, you know, human-like thighs. Okay, so we'll put some, maybe some skinnier ones down here by the shin. Okay, so once I have this though, if you notice when I zoom out, we're losing that back leg, but check out that shoulder area. Look how that pops. So you could do the same thing with this. And what this also does is not only does it, does it bring these to the forefront, but it shows you where the larger body parts are anyway. And it helps with proportions big time. It definitely helps with proportions. I'm noticing some mistakes here that I've made. I'm just gonna kind of draw over those. Okay, so proportions, it's adding depth. All right, so now when we zoom out, that's a really cool effect. And look at the layering that's happening around it. So you can see that these lines that I'm putting in, these scribbled lines, these very, very faint ones, are building up its own texture and there's no shading. Like, I I have yet to do any kind of hatching or hardcore shading at all. Um, another really cool trick to add depth and add energy to your, your sketches just with line weight is any time that you have something meeting the ground, Okay, so a hand, a foot, or whatever. Um, you darken up where the, the point of contact is. Okay, and then you release pressure as you go away from the ground. So here, down by the foot, I'm just gonna fade off some thick to thin lines really fast. And then the same thing with the front toe of that, of that foot. And then the same thing with the, the heel of the, the hand right here. So you can see underneath here, it's getting pretty dark because that's where the shadow would exist if it's casted on the ground. And then over here where the claw is, so let's just kind of put in a sharp claw. And then I'll fade it off like this. Okay, keeping everything in the back there pretty light. There's the foot, you can see it bending. I'm gonna darken the back of the tail up a little bit here just so we can actually see what's going on at the end of the, the creature. Like that. So. Now, uh, oh, another area that I should darken is definitely the, the chin. So let's put it the darkness of the chin in. I'm going thick to thin, even in these small areas here. I'm, I'm pushing like this and I'm releasing pressure. So you can see the stroke right here, how, it's, how it starts thick and then it goes thin. Um, the more you practice that, the more you practice doing that with the lines, the better shading you're gonna to get too, because it's the same thing. You gotta train your, your mind and your hand to push and pull, push and pull, you know. Release pressure, apply pressure, release, apply. So much so that it's going to become second nature. So I'm just kind of plopping in shapes here. Okay, some, some big shapes. I know that these big cheekbone scales right here are probably gonna to need to get a little darker, so I'll put that in maybe on the chin and the jaw here. I'll put in some smaller shapes. Uh, the mouth crease, you wanna keep kind of dark just so we as the viewer know where the mouth opens. So we can switch this. Okay, that looks pretty cool. And then a little, little dude here. Also, when you, when you draw these little humans for scale, try, to, try not to draw out the whole human if you're gonna do something fast, just do like a little dot, like this, and then that's it. Because a lot of times when people try to draw humans, they look really bad, <laughs> okay, I've done it too. And they look 
out of proportion, they're not standing correctly, and then it just makes it, everything looks off. Okay, and you definitely don't wanna do that. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. This was a lot of fun. I love teaching about line art and you know all that stuff. Uh, please stay tuned for the next video. I'm gonna show you guys how to render uh, skin wrinkles and muscles after you get all the basic shape, the shapes in and such, and to make it look really good. So thanks again for listening and watching. Hopefully it helped and I'll see you again.